These protests in Israel today um, are because the far-right leader there has just proposed, effectively, um, that he's going to take over the judiciary. He says the courts in his country are, in his words, quote, out of control, and the courts need to be controlled. And so his party is now advancing legislation in which he will control the courts, just like Viktor Orban did in Hungary. Because, of course, an independent judiciary is just as necessary to a democracy as it is anathema to a leader with authoritarian designs. Now, the personal context here in Israel is that the prime minister who's trying to do this is personally facing serious corruption charges in the courts. So, of course, he thinks the courts are out of control and they must be brought under his purview. That's also why you see the protests saying things like crime minister and no one is above the law. They see the authoritarian would-be leader of Israel, right? They see that's their accusation. They see him as essentially moving to get rid of the independent judiciary in that country, both to consolidate his own power and to save himself from his own legal liability putting that pillar of democracy on the chopping block, both because he wishes to put it on the chopping block, but also because it serves him personally in a very short-term and transactional way. That's what has led to all the protests. That's what has led to the accusations of creeping authoritarianism from that leader in Israel. And again, I do think it's easier to see these things when they are far away from us, right? To see how similar they look between all these disparate other countries as they, you know, slough off democracy one after the other, with or without a fight in the streets. But it's also, for us at home, I think it is worth us watching it in other countries to learn the pattern, but also to recognize the signs that we're not immune. Because in this country, our most prominent far-right leader has been, of course, subjected to multiple criminal and counterintelligence investigations by the FBI and the U.S. Justice Department. And so we have seen and we have goggled over the past several years as he started waging and then escalated and escalated and escalated further his attacks on the Justice Department and on the FBI in particular, to the point where not just him, but his party now considers the FBI effectively to be an enemy, and they attack it at every turn, and they're talking about defunding the FBI, and they talk about wanting its leaders arrested. I mean, that has been amazing enough for something to happen in American politics. It still almost feels like it's something we're watching happening in another country, these Trump MAGA Republican attacks on the FBI and the Justice Department, right? As Trump has been under investigation by the FBI and the Justice Department, he has trained his sights on the FBI and the Justice Department. But where is that going? Because we now know that three days from now, on Thursday of this week, former president and current presidential candidate Donald Trump, as of Thursday this week, is likely to understand that he's no longer just facing scrutiny and investigation from law enforcement agencies. He is likely, not certain, but likely to find out this week that he's about to be under court scrutiny as well. Today, a judge in Georgia announced that the special grand jury investigating Trump's efforts to stay in power after losing re-election in 2020, the report on the special grand jury's investigation into that matter, which is meant to inform the to prosecutors' decisions about seeking indictments in that case, that grand jury report is about to be partially unsealed for the public. And we're going to talk about the details of that in just a minute because they're important. But the bottom line is a big picture story for our democracy. I mean, Trump may not find himself being charged in Georgia, just as he may not find himself being charged in New York State, where a grand jury is investigating him as well. He may not find himself being charged in federal court in Washington, where multiple grand juries are investigating him now, too. It's possible he won't face charges in any of these places, right? But if he is, that process of us adjusting to that as a democracy is about to start now. Because the first grand jury we are going to hear from substantively is the one in Georgia, and we are going to hear from them this week. And if you thought it was a bad look for our American version of one of these guys to be attacking you know, the press for challenging him, to be attacking the FBI and the Justice Department for investigating him, what's around the corner for us as a democracy if he is indicted? 
What's around the corner for us if he is indicted is an attack on the specific system that now poses the threat to him. The specific system that holds the power to indict him, to potentially arrest him, to put him in court, to put him on trial. It is one thing to inveigh against the people investigating you. What do you do when the court compels you to do something? Do you attack that system with the same vehemence and with the same willingness to burn down one of the pillars of our democracy? I mean, all around the world, we know what it looks like when far-right leaders try to disassemble those kinds of systems in order to assert and protect and maintain total power for themselves. We have never had to contend with that here. We have a lot to learn quickly about how we're going to shore those things up so they stay standing about what is very likely coming.